skeletons, it's Disney Queen Skelly here. So yeah, I am responding to the Splash Mountain change that has been, of course, publicly known for a little bit now. Um, I would just like to first state that I am um, in this video now and the part two video, I am not addressing any ill will to Disney. Of course, you know, they can do whatever they want to their rides, to the park, to their attractions. And you know, it's if everything, if we didn't want anything to change really, everything would have been the same since 1955. So I mean, yes, it, it's heartbreaking because Splash Mountain was, you know, one of the rides that I had to conquer and I did it and it became my favorite attraction at Disney. But at the same time, you know, change happens and it just, it's because of the times, it's because of, you know, growing up and Disney's growing up just as much as we are. So again, this these videos are no ill will towards Disney. Um, I have just found a few articles that I would like to read to you guys. Um, one is involving Splash Mountain. One is involving Song of the South. One is involving Princess and the Frog. And the other one is on the uh, public news site for Disneyland that I would like to read to you guys as well. So again, there is no ill will towards Disney. This is not slander towards Disney. This is just me sharing some articles I found. And I would like to hear your guys' uh, opinion uh, down below in the comments about how you feel towards this. Um, obviously, you know, with, with all the changes that are happening, you know, I think Disney wants to maybe do a fresh start when we come back and have something brand new for us to look forward to. And I think that Splash Mountain is an appropriate setting for Princess and the Frog because it is a log flume ride. And I mean, a lot of what Princess and the Frog takes place in is a bayou. So, um, I could, I honestly have imagined with hubby how well this could actually go and what they could do and how, you know, amazing it could be. And again, it's sad to see Splash Mountain go, but I mean, we were all sad when Tower of Terror left too and Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout is still as popular as, you know, um, Tower of Terror was when it was open. So I hope you and guys, um, I hope you guys take, uh, what I give to you guys, um, just basically at face value don't read into it don't think that i'm trying to do anything you know to try and make a statement i'm just reading articles to you guys that i have found that um you know i just want you guys to hear so the first two that i'm going to be reading to you guys today is an article on splash mountain and a, a synopsis slash summary of song of the south now i was going to do um a whole video for you guys where i would read the article from Splash Mountain, Song of the South, Princess and the Frog, and the WDW news site. However, uh, that is not the case because it's taken me a while to actually write down a lot of it. So I will just present to you guys what I have, and I think it, it's actually appropriate that I do it like this anyways. So um, again, I hope you enjoy what I have for you guys. I'm so sorry um, if this hurts any of you or offends any of you. Um, if you do not wish to watch this video, you do not have to. You can still leave your uh, comments down below for me to read. Um, but other than that, if you guys don't want to continue on from here, I totally understand. But for those of you who do, thank you so much. I will be uh, giving spoilers to Princess and the Frog and Song of the South if you guys have not seen those movies. So, And again, this will be at face value. So if you guys do not wish to watch this, if you feel that it would hurt you in some way, you do not have to watch this. So I appreciate, again, those of you who do, and those of you who don't, it's totally okay. Just, um, if you still want to leave your comments, you are more than welcome to. I welcome all comments here on, on this channel. Well, I will never do anything to hurt you guys, and you know that. Alright, so first, uh, thing we are going to talk about is, uh, Splash Mountain. There are three versions of Splash Mountain. One in Disneyland's Critter Country, one in Magic Kingdom's Frontierland, and another in Tokyo Disneyland's Critter Country. Disneyland's version is the original with an official opening date of July 17, 1989. This beloved log flume ride was thought of by Imagineer Tony Baxter in the summer of 1983. According to D23.com, Tony was stuck in Anaheim traffic when he thought of the new attraction. America Sings, a Tomorrowland attraction from 1974 to 1988, had low attendance but over 100 awesome audio animatronics that Tony wanted to use. Since America Sings was about to close due to the lack of attendance, why not use the audio animatronics for a brand new ride? We learned via D23.com that the classic Disney film Song of the South came to mind from his childhood memories. The film would provide rich theming and familiarity for guests 
so that Splash Mountain wasn't just any log old log flume ride. Costing a whopping $75 million, the attraction was a gigantic and expensive project for Walt Disney Imagineering. After its popularity in Disneyland be became apparent, versions of Splash Mountain were brought to both the Magic Kingdom and Tokyo Disneyland. While all three versions have a few differences, they all share the adored tune Zippity Doodah and the plot line of Br'er Rabbit escaping Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear's dangerous clutches. Splash Mountain Fun Facts The original name for Splash Mountain was going to be Zippity D River Run. The FW.com found the name change came from Disney CEO Michael Eisner, who wanted to promote the romantic comedy Splash. One of the best parts of Splash Mountain are all the fun critters. The frogs are the greatest, of course. Disneyland transformed Bear Country Land to Critter Country to make the Song of the South theming. All three Disney parks Splash Mountain drops are around 52 and a half feet. Splash Mountain at Tokyo Disneyland Magic Kingdom official opening was the very next day. Mark Davis was an animator on the film Song of the South. Imagineeringdisney.com reports that as an Imagineer, he created the audio animatronics used in America Sings and later in Splash Mountain. There are around 950,000 gallons of water on Magic Kingdom Splash Mountain, meaning you're definitely going to get soaked if you sit in the front. Notice a flashing street lamp as you are hopping into the log. According to the hidden magic of Walt Disney's World by Suzanne Venice, it's just there to let the cast members know the log they're about to move. This method is used on other Disney attractions as well. Next, we are going to be talking about Song of the South. Um, there is one plot summary, and then I will be reading you guys a synopsis. So again, the synopsis does have some spoilers. Um, so if you wish to skip ahead, you may do so. Plot. The kindly storyteller Uncle Remus tells a young boy stories about trickster Br'er Rabbit who outwits Br'er Fox and slow-witted Br'er Bear. Now here is the synopsis. In the late 19th century, newspaper man John and his wife Sally travel from their home in Atlanta to the rural plantation of Sally's mother, Miss Dashi, accompanied by their young son Johnny and his black nursemaid uh, Aunt Tempe. John is excited about meeting Uncle Remus, a legendary black storyteller who amused John and Sally during their childhood, but is confused by his parents' anger toward each other. John, whose controversial writings have strained his marriage, returns to Atlanta alone, and Sally remains at the plantation with Johnny. Hurt by what he perceives as his father's desertion of him, Johnny sneaks out of the house with the intention of running away. As he walks along, Johnny finds the elderly Uncle Remus telling stories to a group of black children. Johnny stops to listen but runs off when Tempe and another servant, Chloe, come looking for him. Remus catches Johnny in the woods and agrees to run away to Atlanta with him, but insists on stopping at his cabin for provisions. While there, Remus tells Johnny a story of Br'er Rabbit, who also tried to run away despite Remus's warning that there is no place far away enough to escape trouble. Br'er Rabbit is captured by Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear, who intended to make a tasty meal of him, but the rabbit easily outwits them, escapes, and returns to his briar patch. Strengthened by the story's moral, Johnny goes home with Toby, the young black servant assigned to look after him. Sally is devastated by his attempt to run away, however, and unfairly blames his behavior on Uncle Remus. Later, Sally orders Johnny to wear a suit with a lace collar, and while the boy wanders about miserably, he is taunted by Joe and Jake Favers, poor white youngsters who are threatening to drown their sister Ginny's puppy. Ginny and Johnny come, become friends, and she gives him the puppy T Tinchi. Sally refuses to let him keep the puppy, however, and orders him to return it. Instead, Johnny takes Ten Tinchi to Uncle Remus, who agrees to keep it for him. But the next day, the, Fav the Favre's boys threaten Johnny with violence unless he returns the puppy. Uncle Remus tells the distressed Johnny about the time Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear used a tar baby to trap Br'er Rabbit, but were once again outwitted by Br'er Rabbit, who begged them not to fling him into the Br'er Patch. Johnny uses the lesson of reverse psychology to get the Favre's boys to complain to their mother about the puppy, and Mrs. Favre's gives them a, a sound whipping. The angry boys then tell Sally their story, and Sally accuses Uncle Remus of warping Johnny with his stories and orders him to stop telling them to her son. Heartbroken, Uncle Remus returns ten Tenchi to the Favre boys, then roughly tells Johnny to leave him alone. A week later, Sally throws a birthday party for Johnny and allows him to invite Ginny despite her misgivings about Ginny's humble upbringing. Johnny happily skips to Ginny's house, but her brothers muddy her only good dress. 
After fighting with the boys and becoming disheveled himself, Johnny tries to placate Jenny about only, but only makes her m cry more. Uncle Remus cannot resist comforting the children with this story and tells them about the time Br'er Rabbit again freed himself from the clutches of Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear by leading them to his laughing place. The wise old man informs the children that everyone has a laughing place, and when they run off to look for theirs, Sally finds them and chastises them for missing the party. Sally then upbraids Uncle Remus and orders him to stay away from Johnny completely. The old man decides that he is of no use anymore and, after packing his few belongings, prepares to depart. Johnny, who has realized that Uncle Remus's cabin is his laughing place, sees his friends leaving and cuts through a field to stop him. The bull in the field chases Johnny and knocks him down, and the unconscious child is rushed into the plantation house. John immediately comes down from Atlanta, but even his presence does not help his delirious son, who calls for Uncle Remus. Miss Dashi sends for him, and as Uncle Remus holds Johnny's hand and tells him another story, the child revives. Finally realizing that they must set aside their problems for the sake of their son, John and Sally d decide to stay at the plantation. Later, Uncle Remus contentedly watches Johnny, Jenny, and Toby play with T Tinchi. He is amazed to see Br'er Rabbit and his other story folk join the children, but soon runs after them and enters their joyous world. All right, guys, so that is what I have for you on um, Splash Mountain and Song of the South. Next time that I respond to the Splash Mountain change, I will be talking about Princess and the Frog, and I will be reading from the WDW News article that is um, made public to you guys about the change of Splash Mountain. So I appreciate you guys so much for watching this. Again, I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Um, how is it affecting you? How do you feel about it? And maybe, like, do you have anything to say about it as well? Again, as I said in the beginning, I bear no ill will towards Disney about this change. It does make me sad because Splash Mountain is my favorite attraction at Disneyland uh, during the non-holiday season. But again, a lot has changed over the past 65 years for Disney, and I mean... You know, it's it's sad when something you love changes, but I mean, at the same time, a lot of stuff has to change. As we grow with Disney, Disney grows with us. So Disney is growing up just like we are, and, you know, we have to support, well, not have to support, but, you know, we have, we, you know, got to understand at least a little bit what's going on and why the changes are happening. So, I mean, you know, it'd be not, it's going to be awesome to see how they do this. I, I... You know, when Tower of Terror changed, I was um, at all disappointed about the change because I didn't like Tower of Terror. <laughs> but uh, I was too afraid to really do um, Guardians of the Galaxy because Tower of Terror had, you know, scared me so much as a kid. But once I got on the ride, you know, I noticed it was a lot of fun. And it's still just as busy as it was back when Tower of Terror was a thing. So I really do want to give this new ride a chance, and I hope some of you guys will as well. Um, so again, I, build, I bear no ill will towards Disney about what they're doing. Of course, they are just changing with the times, and Disneyland is growing up much like we are. So I hope um, those of you who do understand, you know, can see how this ride would actually, you know, be all right. And those of you who are heartbroken, kind of like I am, maybe, you know, you don't have to love it, but I mean, at the same time, don't go bashing it because you know it's it, it's sad what happened but sometimes something new can be good and you never really know really what your opinion might be after it does change or after you do go on it so I hope whenever it does open back up that we can all go on it and find something to love about it just like we loved Splash Mountain so thank you guys so so much for watching bye little skeletons stay safe I love you guys.